1966, Irvin Kirshner, who directed the best of the Star Wars trilogy, The Empire Strikes Back, was teaching filmmaking to a particularly promising bunch of movie brat students. He happened to say to one of them, a 27-year-old Italian-American called Francis Ford Coppola, that the newly developed gun microphones were so directional that you could use them to pick up the sound of a single person speaking in a crowd. Eight years later, Coppola unveiled a movie on this theme, and the result is considered by some people to be one of the greatest since the coming of sound. Coppola was always a techno buff. His story is about a solitary surveillance expert played by Gene Hackman, who, like David Hemmings in Blow Up, thinks he has uncovered a murder. The evidence is a piece of recorded sound, which Hackman manipulates, enhances and isolates. The film makes a single line of dialogue, which I won't tell you about because I don't want to give the game away, one of the most memorable in movie history. Every sound recordist I've ever worked with loves this movie. It's almost about the philosophy of sound, and I think that's because of Coppola's colleague, Walter Murch, who invented the role of sound designer. He did the sound on Apocalypse Now and got two Oscars for The English Patient. Some people have said that this film is autobiographical because, like Coppola, its main character doesn't know where business ends and personal life begins. Hey, Harry, what do you say we take a break? Come on, we'll go to Al's Trans Bay. I'll buy you a beer, huh? How about that? No, uh, I want to finish this. He thought you'd turn those tapes in. John Cazale, who's a real movie drum actor, played five great parts in his short life. The Godfather, The Conversation, Godfather Part Two, Dog Day Afternoon, and The Deer Hunter. Here comes the conversation. Shh. 